Today I'm going to be reviewing a bunch of sketchbooks that I have used in the last couple of years for my watercolour painting, for my practice, and uh, there might be some brands you've heard of, maybe some you haven't, some that you're curious to know what I think of. It's also going to be a little sketchbook tour so you get to have a peek of all the paintings that are done right from the beginning up to around now. So if you're interested, let's dive right into these sketchbooks. All right, so these are the eight sketchbooks that I will be reviewing today. Uh, these are the eight that I have used and I will review them in, in according to sequence of when I use them, all right? So you get to see a little bit of uh, the artwork that I created from the very beginning all the way to my latest one. And I will be reviewing them mostly in this A5 size. A5 is half of A4 and uh, except for there's one big one here, but it comes in A5 size, so I included that in my review as well. But they're mostly A5, so I can keep the review and comparison fair. I will talk about the prices, and I also will talk about, yeah, all the little details. So let's get into it straight away. Okay, so this one is the very first sketchbook that I actually bought from the local $2 shop here in Australia, and the brand is Montmartre. So Montmartre, I think, is maybe it's an Australian brand, I'm not sure, but it's this brand here. And you can find this brand in most of the budget arts and crafts store. I got this one, it's A5 size, and it's actually mixed media. So it's very thin, 150 GSM, cream paper, and it's a little bit um, toothy. So I got this because I just wanted to have something that's cheap and I didn't feel pressure to create anything, um, you know, too finished and beautiful and just for practice. And it worked well. I think, I, I think it served its purpose. It's obviously quite thin um, and it won't hold a ton of water, but for just drills and practices like all this that I did, um, perfectly fine, no pressure. And this cost about $7.50. Um, Australian dollars, very, very affordable. And um, yeah, I just a little flip through of all the little practices I did. And of course, I took a long time to finish this. So um, let's see, look at the date. I started here, I didn't even put a date in the first one, but okay, well, this one's got 15 October, 2020. And then the final one was actually 12 March, 2022. So I definitely use this quite a lot. There's just so many pages, yeah. So over two years, I use this little sketchbook um, if I wanted something fast and cheap to paint on. Okay, that's Montmartre. And then the next one I bought was this one. And you might find this familiar. It's Canson XL. And I thought it was very fancy to get this one. So this Canson XL, I bought it online. I think that you don't, I don't really see this in any of the art shops here in Australia. So I had to get it online. And this was about 10 Australian dollars. And it's 300 GSM, so it's much thicker paper. It's still um, not cotton, it's cellulose. But I loved it. I really, really enjoyed painting on this. I felt super fancy. I felt like, um, you know, the paints just stayed very vibrant and fresh. Um, I guess I was just not even to the level yet that I could tell a difference whether cotton or non-cotton and just did a lot of practice in this A5 size and I think as a beginner I was comfortable with A5 because you know you just want to start small and, and practice little little things so I enjoyed um, painting here making cards so I did tear some pages off as you can see if I like the painting and I want to gift it to a friend or frame it, I tore it. So it's got this nice, easy, perforated um, pages. So yeah, and this one, I finished it off uh, quite early. I think March 20, 2021. And yeah, I really recommend this brand. And I actually got another one in the A4 size, which is not very much more expensive. And I use it for swatching and you know, play and stuff. So yeah, Canson XL, that is the next one I used. Then I decided to try 100% um, cotton and I worked my way up to this one. It's the Windsor & Newton 
100% cotton, 20 sheets, 300 GSM. Now, I just went online to check how much this costs and it says 34 US, uh, sorry, 34 Australian dollars. But I'm pretty sure I got this quite cheap, much cheaply than that. That's why I got it. I think it was maybe 20 uh, dollars, 20 Australian dollars at that point. And I, I was looking like made in Malaysia. Maybe that's why it was a bit uh, more affordable. But in any case, this was my first cotton watercolor paper. And um, I found it's quite smooth, although it says cold press. I found the paper really smooth and not much texture. I mean, of course, it's not totally smooth. It's not hot press, but I find the, the texture just less. Um, yeah. So anyway, I had fun with this, but as you can tell, because it was like 100% cotton, I made each piece like really cute and intentional and I didn't do too much scribbly things on it. Lots of online tutorials. Um, and then there's one scribbly one here. This one was just play. And then usually as, you, as I get towards the end of the sketchbook, I become a little bit more looser and you know, I just want to get on. I don't feel as precious anymore. Uh, but yeah, this is cute. I like this one. I put a background there. I think I played with a bit of gouache. And this is a Jenna Rainey little uh, tutorial, I think. Um, just playing, more playing taking advantage of the whole landscape to create that. So yeah, this is the Windsor and Newton 100% cotton. And I actually got myself a bigger one, A4 one, because it was, it was good priced. I think it wasn't too expensive and I just wanted to, you know, have a, a bigger canvas to play with. Um, see how thick the paper is, so yeah. So I, I don't know when I decided to try using sketchbook versus loose paper, but I actually feel like in watercolor, it's a bit tricky to work in a sketchbook because you always need to wait for it to dry. Then when you're waiting for it to dry, <coughs> you can't close it and work on the next page instantly. And therefore, it doesn't have that same momentum as, as if, if you may be, uh, you know, sketching, for example, which you can go from page to page. So yeah. This is also a hardcover, another hardcover one. And I don't think I'll buy this again because the price is just too expensive. And I, yeah, like I said, even though it's 100% cotton, I find this pretty similar to Canson XL, if you ask me. All right, so this is how I felt about this one, Windsor & Newton. All right, the next one I wanted to show you are these ones by Cardi Paper. I don't know if you heard this brand before, but it's this one, Cardi Papers. And I first heard of it, I heard of some artists using it because it's 100% cotton. In fact, it's made in India. It's called Cotton Rag or something. And I love how the edges um, appear. And I think it was Jolie Poa. Jolie Poa, I don't know if you follow her on Instagram, YouTube, and Skillshare classes, but she was the first ones to use this Cardi paper and I was very curious. So I bought this off Jackson's Art Online in the UK, which is the only place I could find them online, and I wanted to give it a go. So this doesn't even come with an actual cover. It's The whole sheet is just bound beautifully by, by just these uh, thread. So, um, and... Although online it says 16 pages, that is definitely more than 16 pages. I'm not sure how they count 16 at all. It, I have not counted the pages, but it's definitely more than 16, okay? And the price of this is... The price of this is 36 Australian dollars. Uh, it's pretty good price. It is actually priced really well. Uh, considering the number of pages and considering it's cotton. So let me show you how it performs. This is the first painting I did here and I felt like the color faded a little bit. Um, it's not as intense as, and it's not as bright as you would a more, uh, I guess, modern paper. And then I saw that Jolie Poir said that she used her art philosophy paints to, to use on here. 
uh, and it come, it will pop up a little bit more. So then I do have some art philosophy paints. So this is my art philosophy paint palette. Um, I got into them maybe a year or two ago because I was just feeling like trying different paints and experimenting. And there's just something about the pigment here which is super bright, super vibrant that it will shine through the dull um, cutty paper. So I don't know if it's the sizing or how they make this paper, but the colour just sinks in a little bit more and it takes a bit super, you need like super vibrant paints for it to show up. Um, so I just continued playing around. It takes wet on wet beautifully. Look at how it it actually dries really nicely. Super beautiful, dreamy, wet and wet stuff. But this is really dull. So overall, maybe through the camera it looks quite nice, but in actual uh, life, I'm just feeling like, I don't know, after I paint something, I don't feel very um, satisfied after it dries. Immediately when I'm painting it, it's okay. This one is also... Um, cold press, so it's not rough, but it is pretty rough if you ask me. Uh, yeah, and then slowly I kind of lost a bit of steam and I... This is the last thing I did. Actually, this was just last week I used the Christy Rice to see how her paints um, perform on Cardi and it's quite pretty. It's quite nice. So yeah, I used the Christy Rice set for this. And uh, overall, some people I know love Cardi papers, but I would say that I struggled to even finish this and then I kind of like left sketchbooks for a while. So, so there, Cardi. Next up, we have the Moleskin, very famous brand. I decided I wanted to try their watercolor paper sketchbook. This is also not cotton. It's just cellulose, but uh, and this costs about 38 Australian dollars for just 200 GSM. Um, yeah, so the paper is not even very thick. I wasn't super mm, impressed. I guess at that point, I thought like, oh my god, I'm spending almost $40 on, on a sketchbook. It better be awesome, it better be great. And then I went online and a lot of people uh, were saying how the Moleskin somehow they changed something about their paper and it's not that great anymore. So I don't know which batch I got. I think I got the newer batch, which is the not great batch. So these are my sketches and it's because it's not cotton paper, it just doesn't move and blend as well as uh, cotton for sure but it was still fun to just play and sketch and I think I made an effort to create very cute pieces as well because it was like ooh moleskin you know I gotta like keep this and look at it one day so yeah just uh so and then towards the end it was just mostly play yeah, and then I haven't even finished it. I still have three or four more pages. So, 200 GSM, $38, moleskin. I think it's cute. It's got like this leathery bound with this rubber thing, very fancy. There we go, that's moleskin. Okay, I think I skipped. I said I was going on in a chronological order of when I had it. I'm going to rewind a little bit. And this is something I got definitely in the first or the second year of painting. It's a Strathmore Visual Journal Mixed Media. And it's 100% cotton. And it is uh, 190 GSM. So I chose to get this because it was pretty good priced. Uh, I've written down here that the A5 size is $23, so maybe this was $30 plus. And because it was A4, it's bigger and it's 100% cotton. And although it's thinner, 190 and mixed media and doesn't say watercolour, I thought I'll give it a go, right? Because it's cotton. The cotton thing really drew me in. And so I got it and I used it. And I feel, for some reason, it, 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 it feels like it paints, it finishes a bit duller as well. Something about 
the paper just soaks the, the watercolour in and everything feels a bit pale and dull. I'm pretty sure I got my professional colours already at this time, but it's still coming out dull. Um, every painting I did, I feel a bit underwhelmed. Um, and yeah, somehow I just, I just feel, yeah, I, I just don't think I'll buy this ever again. It, it's probably great for gouache. And like this one is a bit gouache, I'm pretty sure and for a bit heavier medium, but for watercolour, somehow it just, it just doesn't soak it in. And this one is acrylic, so great for those type of media, but not for, not for watercolour. So that's my review on this. It's just a shame because it's very cute. I do like the bind. This gives it a more like, you know, rough feel, like I'm just really sketching. Uh -huh, da -da! The very famous Etcher Lab 100% cotton sketchbook okay so this one i i really you know wanted to get for ages and ages but the thing is they sold it in packets of three online they don't do singles so you can either buy a pack of three of the same size or a pack of three in different sizes which i bought later okay but the first one i ever bought is just this one piece from an art shop in singapore where they sold it as a single so I think I paid 30, uh, I think I paid a little less than 40 Singapore dollars, which is the same as Australian. And um, so it's the same price or a little bit more than moleskin. And uh, yeah, and I was like, okay, I'm very excited. I'm going to give this a go. Everyone's using it. How's it play out, right? So I used it. I like the vibrancy it retains. I like the way it bleeds, but there's just something about it that is uh, makes the overall painting look feathered or blur. I don't know how to describe it, but it just isn't as sharp. You know, there's some the crisp is gone. And if you don't mind that then that's fine. I don't know if it's the toothiness or how it dries. I really, really don't know. But there's just something about it that the finished look is a bit fuzzy and furry. And I don't get that with my usual watercolor, 100% cotton paper. It's 300 GS... Uh, no, actually it's just two, 230 GSM. So it's not 300, it's 230, but it's sufficiently thick. You don't need it to be anywhere. I don't anyway, to have it thicker than that. 100% cotton. Um, and I think this is one of my latest ones. I took it on holiday, and so I had a chance to paint on it. This one, upside down. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think, I'm not sure. Like I said, as I'm painting it, very satisfying, but when it dries, it has that feathered, weird featheredness about it. Not so sure. But you know what? I went ahead to buy the three pack anyway, because <coughs> I can't remember why, because. So I've started on the small one, which again, I struggle to paint small, so I'm not sure how much I'll go into this. Uh, the medium one, I haven't, the A5 one, I haven't gone to it yet. And then the big one, I just started with a big swatch, swatching exercise that I did yesterday. Just yesterday, actually. So yeah, that is the Etcher Lab sketchbook. I know they have the perfect sketchbook, which is like double the price. Uh, totally a, a league of its own. Maybe $60 for the A5 one, which uh, one day when I am rich and famous, I might get that, but I just cannot uh, bring myself to pay that much for a sketchbook at the moment for some reason. I mean, I, I pay that for paper, but I don't know. Maybe. Tell me what you think if you have the perfect sketchbook. The Echolab perfect sketchbook. And if you're Echolab and you are reading and listening to my review, you want to send me a perfect sketchbook to review, I'm more than happy. You have my email address. Okay, finally, these are Stillman and Burn. I actually bought two 
if you watch my other uh, art haul video that I just released before this, you would see these. And I've just heard so much about this Stillman & Burn and their parent company is Claire Fontaine. They make paper. So they're a paper company. You know, they're not like a Windsor & Newton, which is a paint company trying to make sketchbooks. They're a paper company making paper. And I think that's why they have the strength and they can, um, they can charge. So this one is... Uh, Gosh, I, I threw away the paper. I think the Zeta series, Z-E-T-A, yes, which is 270 GSM, smooth, so very hot press, smooth, not cotton, not cotton at all. Um, <clears throat> what else? And they're about 38 Australian dollars. So same price as Moleskin, cheaper than Etcher. Uh, actually, yeah, actually it's, it's just not, not that expensive. And I must say, I have been loving it. It's not cotton, but look at the, look at how much it retains the vibrancy. Okay, this is acrylic. It retains everything and it's, it, it bleeds also really lovely, lovely, love, <laughs> lovely, lee. And uh, I, I've just started it. So I think I will definitely explore more. I'm loving this mixed media thing that I did. So I bought these for my mixed media play. I want to try more mixed media stuff. Um, and then this is the another one, which is thinner. So it's cream. It's 150, I think, GSM only. But it still managed to hold some water. So I just love how the paint glides. And uh, very, very impressed. I don't know what, I really don't know the science of paper, but I'm really loving the Stillman and & Burn. And they have so many different series. I think I'll try even more next time. And there you have it, my sketchbook review. Um, this is by no means the only brands out there. Obviously, there's more. I do want to try C White. I want to try Jackson's. And let me know in the comments if there's any brand that you feel that is really, really good and um, maybe I should try. Or if there's anything in the list that I have mentioned that you resonate with or you disagree with, I'm really curious to know. We're all supply addicts, I know. and. Um, just keep painting, keep being creative. Don't let yourself um, think that you're not worthy for a sketchbook. You totally are. It's fun to keep a nice archive of a sketchbook like this. And thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my mailing list, go ahead and do it because I do love to send out updates and inspiration and stuff, all stuff arty and watercolor. Otherwise, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one.